But now I I I see.
Happy Resurrection Sunday to all of you all. You all look so good this morning. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Glad to see you all. Amen. Everybody knows by now that this is my favorite Sunday of the year. Amen. And I just love every Sunday, but this, this Sunday is just my favorite one. And I share so often that uh, we would go to church all day long, uh, sunrise service, and then after that, uh, morning service at 8 o'clock, and then Sunday school, then 11 o'clock, and then we'd come back at 6 o'clock. And sometime Papa Markham would go with me, and he'd be here for sunrise service, and, and then for 8 o'clock, and then for 11 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and then Ann, we get in the parking lot, he asked me, where are we going now, amen? <laughs> I, said, I said, Papa, we going home, amen? <laughs> I said, where the young men can rest, amen? Glad to see you all here this morning. <clears throat> pray for me as I pray for you. Beloved, if you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 1, and you all remind me to recognize any visitors if they are here on this morning. We do want to give recognition to them. God has a word for us, something that we want to make clear that you might have a hold on that will bless your lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 1, and then verse 3 and 4 afterwards. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried somebody said buried and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. <laughs> mm. Does your Bible say that? You bow now with a word of prayer. Come now, Holy Spirit. Feed your lambs. Feed your sheep. What thus saith the Lord. You know their needs. You know their desires. In the name of Jesus, in agreement with their prayers, I pray you come and minister to them. Those of us that need healing, touch us. Heal us. Bless our families. Bless our finances. Bless our health. Bless our ministries. Bless our lives. Lord, don't let not one soul leave here without a blessing from you. As they're hearing this word, receiving this word, bless their lives and hear the prayers they're praying while they're hearing the word. Again, let every soul when they leave here, let them be blessed. And not just this day, but all 2022 and for the rest of their lives, that will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. 
We give honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. The Bible says he hung, he bled, he died. But on the third day, y'all got it, on the third day, he got up from the grave. Amen. We want to use as a subject title this morning, the gospel. That's the subject title, the gospel. If you have some neighbor next to you, be so kind to say the gospel. Say, what, what your preacher preach on this morning? The gospel. Hmm. Paul presents in chapter 15 the proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Believing the gospel includes holding firmly to the belief of Christ's resurrection. That Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians Chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Paul states that the resurrection is part of the gospel. Without the resurrection, there is no gospel. The good news is that Jesus got up from the dead. Confucius didn't do that. Muhammad didn't do that. Buddha didn't do that. Paul preached the gospel and the believers received the word and they trusted Christ and they were saved. And now they're standing on the word of God as assurance of their salvation. In other words, they knew that they were saved, that God had saved them. A dead savior can't save anybody. Paul says to reject the resurrection is to make your faith vain. It's no good. Dr. J. Vernon McGee says, and it helps us, quote, when Paul encountered the Lord on the Damascus road, he did not know that Jesus was back from the dead. Paul asked, Lord, who are you? <laughs> Paul did not know at that point that the risen Lord was Jesus. Oh, he was shocked. Paul saw for himself that the resurrected, resurrected Christ was Jesus. How many of y'all know Jesus is the Christ? <laughs> oh, yes, he is. The Corinthians were far from really appreciating what the gospel meant. As a lot of folks today, they don't, they don't really appreciate what the gospel really means. There were some who were even challenging the fact that the resurrection even occurred. Can I back that up this morning? 
Beloved, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 12, the, the Bible says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? How many of folks have been difficult a long time? <laughs> Paul had come to Corinth and preached the message of the gospel and their faith had transformed their lives. An important part of the message of the gospel was that Christ rose from the dead. He got up from the dead. He got up from the grave. That's why we hear this Easter morning, this resurrection morning. You all believe like I believe that, that he got up from the dead. Or if he didn't get up, I'd be at home watching TV right now. But I know that he got up from the dead. Paul's hearers had received the word, trusted Christ, got saved, and now they were standing on the word of God and they were assured of their salvation. The fact that they were standing firm is proof that their faith was genuine and not empty. Paul preached to them the gospel. But then you might say this morning, preacher, tell me just what is the gospel? Ask your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, what is the gospel? Then tell your other neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, the gospel is three facts. Put up three fingers. The gospel is three facts. Let me tell you what the three facts are. Number one, Dr. Jackson, Jesus died for our sins. Number two, Jesus was buried. Number three, Jesus rose again. Very simple. Just three things. That is the gospel. That is a ticket to heaven. Mm. Can I bag it up? You done said that, now you bag it up. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 3. And, and this is a very important scripture you all have to know. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3. The, the Bible says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received. And I like what one author said. He said, Paul didn't make this up. <laughs> he received it. He didn't think it up. He received it. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received. That Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. Now Robbie when I say according to the scriptures, that means God says I'm going to back it up. The Bible says Jesus died according to the scriptures. Oh, Brother Pentagraph, what it means, GQ, is that, that, that the Bible says that, that, that he was supposed to die for our sins. Can I go there this morning? Oh, John chapter 10 and verse 11. Uh, the Bible says, I am the good shepherd. 
the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Can I go a little further? John chapter 12 and verses 23 and 24. The Bible says, and Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, come on somebody, it bringeth forth, can I go there? Much fruit. Somebody say much fruit this morning. Uh, and then the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, the Bible says, For when ye were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Guess who were the ungodly? Just look around. <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> get myself in trouble. I didn't call your name. I said the ungodly. But if the truth be told, I was one of the ungodly sisters. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15, the Bible says, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and what? Rose again. Is that in your Bible? Can I back it up this morning? Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 9. The Bible says, and they sung a new song, saying, thou art worthy to take the book. And to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain mm, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Well, Minister Cockrell and Ponders Chambers, I know for a fact that he died for our sins, didn't he? Christ died for our sins is part of the heart of the gospel. This is of first importance. This was part of the early church's confession that Christ died for our sins. And then it is verified by the scriptures. You find it all throughout the scriptures. Can I back it up this morning? Oh, beloved, if you go to Isaiah chapter 53 and look at verses 8 through 10, the, the Bible says, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, <laughs> nor was any deceit in his mouth. Does your Bible say that this morning? Oh, he, 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 yeah, yet, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offsprings and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord, come on somebody, will prosper in his hands. Oh, did it prosper? It's 2,000 years later. Folks are still getting saved. 
Ah, I don't want to get happy right now. Let, let me keep on moving. Amen. Well, Paul wrote according to the scriptures. This means he was, ref he was referring to the Old Testament scriptures. The sacrificial system in the Old Testament pointed the way to the future sacrifice of Christ as our substitute and as our savior. He died in our places. It should have been us on that cross, the guilty one, but our blood would have done no good. Can I go a little further this morning? Well, the gospel is the most important message that the church ever proclaimed. The gospel stands on the fact that Jesus died, Jesus was buried, and Jesus rose again according to the scripture. Now, that second fact says Jesus was buried. That's important because it proves that he didn't just disappear. It means that they had his body. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, they went to Pilate and they asked for his crucified body. They knew that it was Jesus. They, they buried Jesus. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. They buried Jesus. Jesus. Oh, that's, that's, that's very, very important. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can you say buried? buried. That, that is very important because that confirms his death. You, you normally don't bury folks that are alive. But every now and then, folks do do that too. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? Uh, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 4, the, the Bible says, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Does your Bible say that? Somebody say according to the scriptures. Yes, he, he was buried. All right. And then the third fact is that Jesus rose again. The tomb was empty. Y'all don't believe me. Can I back it up? Beloved, if you look at Matthew chapter 28 and verses 1 to 6, the Bible says in the end of the Sabbath, as began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Uh, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the women fear not ye for I know that ye seek Jesus which was what crucified uh, he is not here uh, somebody said he's not here how come he's not here uh, for he is risen as he said come see the place where the Lord lay somebody ought to get happy right there uh, how many glad it was empty Ah, uh, how many are glad it was empty? Yeah, that says something right there. The angel said, don't be afraid, amen. 
Well, preacher, what is the gospel? Now, I want y'all to repeat after me that uh, Jesus died for our sins. Now, 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 wait a minute. Take a deep breath. T take your Cheerios in. Let's do it again. Uh, Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose again. Now give God a hand of praise this body. Yeah. Also that he appeared, Jesus appeared to others to verify the fact of his resurrection. To bring some others, Jonathan, into it and Sister Cockrell, Minister Cockrell, to bring forth the fact that others saw it too. Percy, it wasn't just a few folks saw it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 5 says, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Cephas was the first male witness to see Jesus. You know what that means? The women beat him there. It happens like that sometimes. Uh, don't, don't get too proud, women. <laughs> I can feel y'all up here. This Cephas is Simon Peter to whom Jesus appeared privately. The Holy Spirit mentions Peter because Peter denied him three times. Those of us who have failed in life know that there is a second chance in Jesus. How many know that Jesus will give you a second chance? Uh, how many know he'll give you a third chance? How many of you have messed up before and needed a second chance? Uh, how many of you will confess this morning that you need more than one chance? Put your feet down. Put your feet down. Have you ever failed before and failed miserably? Are you struggling this morning? And maybe you messed up this week and you need another chance. Can I go there? Maybe you are unsatisfied with life and are searching for a more meaningful relationship with the Lord. The gospel I know for a fact is for you. Can I go a little further this morning? Jesus went to Peter because Peter had failed and failed big time and failed miserably. If that's you this morning, I want you to know that God is knocking on your door this morning. How many know that he'll knock on your door sometime to get your attention or to come in and fellowship with you? Can I back it up this morning? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, uh, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, am I right, Mr. Cochran? I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. Is that all right? It's good to have a relationship with Jesus. I was talking to my neighbor on yesterday. I said, it's not about religion. It's about relationship. Can I go there this morning? Jesus was seen by Peter. And then the Bible says he was seen by the 12. On the cross, Jesus was exposed to the, to the eyes of many unbelievers. But in the resurrection, Jesus was seen by believers that they might go and testify of the resurrection. Can I back it up this morning? Yeah, you have received Jesus for a person that 
you might tell other folks about Jesus. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't keep it to yourself. Uh, Brother Lonnie Cole said, we got to tell somebody else about Jesus. Do you love to talk about Jesus? Well, can I go there this morning? Acts chapter 1 and verse 22. The Bible says, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Somebody say resurrection. Well, go a little further. Acts chapter 2 and verse 32. The Bible says, this Jesus. Somebody shout, this Jesus. Come on, give me a this Jesus. This Jesus has God raised up. Whereof we are all witnesses. Can I go a little bit further? Acts chapter 3 and verse 15. The Bible says, and kill the prince of life. Oh, Tim and Brother Chambers, whom God has raised from the dead. Is that a witness right there? It says, whereof we are witnesses. Uh, can I go a little bit further? Uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse number 32. Oh, can I go there? Uh, Sister Murray and Sister Pentagram, <laughs> Sister Otis, the Bible says, and we are all his witnesses. Somebody shout his witnesses. Come on, somebody say his witnesses. And we are all his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. How many of y'all are trying to obey the Lord this morning? How many of y'all got the Holy Ghost this morning? Yes. Can I go a little bit further? Then Jesus was seen by some other disciples. Can I back it up this morning? Uh, this thing wasn't done privately. Other folks saw it for themselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 6. The Bible says, uh, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Is that all right? <laughs> of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. Well, later on, about 500 Christian brothers they witnessed to the fact of the resurrection. Mm, they saw the resurrected Lord and they were probably the ones who heard the great commission. In Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 through 20. After all, Jesus told his disciples, he said, go meet me in Galilee. You know, you bad when you can tell somebody they're going to crucify me and I meet you later on in Galilee. <laughs> you somebody, amen. <laughs> can I go there this morning? Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. <laughs> there you will see him. Now I have told you. That's the angels talking right there. In other words, if you don't show up, it's on you now. <laughs> Can I go there? Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 10. The Bible says... Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Uh, can y'all run with me? 
they heard the great commission can i go there in matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 through 20 these 500 christian brothers along with the 18 they heard the great commission if you say preacher preacher what is the great commission this is the great commission right here i want you to tell three neighbors it's for all of us tell your neighbor neighbor it ain't just for pastor markham it's for all of us can i back it up dr taylor can i back it up the bible says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth it says go ye therefore can i go there this morning go is not a question <laughs> can i go there this morning uh can i can i you got a lot of you, you teachers out there that's not in the interrogative state where you're asking a question that's is in the imperative state that means that's a command that means get up from here go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost can i go there teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and this is the shouting part and lo i am with you always somebody shout always come on shout always i want to shout always doctor i want to shout always lo i'm with you always is he with you this morning somebody shout always if you don't feel good he's with you always i dare you to tell about 10 neighbors always i dare you to get happy and say always i dare you to say it like you mean always most of y'all don't but i feel y'all they're just looking at me oh, always pandemic situations don't matter I got a promise I can stand on I didn't get it for ABC NBC no I am with you always even Through the hospital rooms, through the emergency room, through the CC room, through the IC room, through the hard time, through the difficult time, through the dark days. I am. Didn't mean to go there. Sometimes now and then can't see your way. I'm with you always. I come on back sometime. I go back. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. And don't miss how he ended. He said, Amen. <laughs> Tell three neighbors, Amen. 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 Preach about to get happy up here. Come on. Can I go a little further? Most of these 500 Christian brothers were still alive when Paul was preaching. Paul felt good and felt confident that he had 500 folks to back up what he was talking about. He could, he could question them and they would back up his bag up. 
that Jesus got up from the grave. Tell three neighbors, Jesus got up from the grave. And then, then let's go a little further, a little further. Paul is working this thing. Then he says, Jesus was seen by his half-brother. Which, which, which meant that, that Joseph had nothing to do with him being born. Mary conceived it of the Holy Ghost. And James was his half-brother. And James saw it too. I don't know, I like his name. Amen, that's a good name. Oh, y'all know my name. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, that was a private joke, amen. Can I go there this morning? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 7, the, the Bible says, after that, he was seen of James. Then of all the apostles. This is significant for the fact that James and his half-brothers, they did not believe in his ministry when he was on earth. Can I back it up? Can I back it up? John chapter 7 and verse number 5, the, the Bible says, for even his own brothers. Yeah, that's the Bible, isn't it? You see the Bible right there? Even his own brothers did not believe in him. Mm, well, well, what caused James to change? Why did he turn around? It was the resurrection that turned him around. And after they, they turn around, then they join with the other believers. Can I back it up this morning? Oh, God, God is opening your eyes this morning. Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, the, the Bible says they all joined together constantly in prayer. Oh, if the church would do that today. <sighs> Come on, somebody. Along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and who else? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Uh, and Estella, now his brothers are there with him. Now they believe in him. Why do they believe him? Because they saw him when he was resurrected. Can I go there this morning? They had a private appearance. Jesus appeared to James and, and appeared to, to the brethren. And now they're believers. They believe that Jesus got up from the grave and that Jesus is the Christ and Jesus is the Messiah. Preacher, just what is the gospel? I want y'all to say after me three facts. Number one, Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was buried. And Jesus rose again. Now, if you believe that, give him a big hand clap this morning. Help me, Holy Ghost. Very important. According to the scriptures, which means the Bible, brother and sister Whedon, the Bible backs it up. And then Paul, as he, he makes his case, he's like in a courtroom, methodically, systematically, he's making his case for the resurrection. And finally he says, all these folks saw him, but the most important thing is, I saw him for myself. <laughs> Can I go there? I can't tell you what water tastes like until I drink for myself. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 8. The Bible says, and last of all, somebody say last of all. Come on, somebody say last of all. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. In other words, I had an abnormal birth. The greatest witness Paul had was himself. No greater witness than when you have your own personal encounter with Jesus. There's nothing better than having a personal 
relationship with Jesus. It's good to brag about mama's relationship. How daddy knew him. How grandma got happy. But you gotta know him for yourself. How many of you know him for yourself this morning? That's about half of y'all. Amen. How many of you know without a shadow of a doubt that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? And you're willing to witness this morning that he's been good to you. And you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. If you believe that, give him some praise this morning. Give him some thanks here. Yeah, come on, let's get a praise break in here. Let's get a thank God in here. Y'all came through the pandemic. Y'all came through some stuff. Y'all been through some stuff. Y'all put up with some stuff. Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't be here this morning. Somebody shake those curls out. Shake that tie this morning. Give God some praise. Give God some thanksgiving. Come on, let's give God some praise this morning. Yeah, you cute this morning. You look good, but give God some praise. If you got more than one foot, stand up this morning. Give God some praise this morning. If you know without a shadow of doubt that God's been good, give God some praise. <laughs> you may be seated, amen. Some of y'all got two, some of y'all got two hands, and you never know what they were for, did you? Amen. You found out this morning. Lastly. The resurrected Christ appeared to Paul. It's hard to argue with a man who has seen the Lord for himself. The apostle Paul saw the appearance of Jesus on Damascus Road. And that appearance changed his whole life. Can I bag it up this body? Paul says, all these folks saw him, but I saw him for myself. Can I back it up this body? How many of you have seen the Lord for yourself? Experience him for yourself. Can I back it up this morning? Come on, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 9 and verses 3 through 6. The Bible says, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly, somebody shout suddenly, there shined around about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Yeah, and he said, who art thou, Lord? Uh, and the Lord said, I am Jesus, good God Almighty, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Somebody shout, must do. Oh, good God Almighty. Christ has a work that he has to do. Christ did his work on the cross of Calvary. He did everything needed to be done that we could be saved. But now that we're saved, we got a work that we got to do. Yeah. To your neighbor, neighbor, yeah. you got a work that you got to do. And tell me it got your name on it too. <laughs> ah, can I go there this morning? God didn't save you for nothing. God didn't save you that you might be a knot on the log. Can I go there this morning? God didn't save you that you may ride to pine, ride to bench, 
God wants you to get in the game. Can I go there this morning? Oh, Christ saved you for a purpose. That some other souls waiting on you to open your mouth up. Tell them what the gospel is. Just three facts. Can I go there this morning? Oh, some of you this morning might be hurting. You might be feeling empty this morning. Oh, I've been there before. You might be feeling lonely this morning. Might be feeling that life seems so meaningless. You might be hurting this morning. You might be searching this morning. You might be so unfulfilled this morning. You might feel disconnected this morning. You might say, preacher, I'm just miserable. I feel alienated. I've been rejected by my family. I feel so unloved. I feel looked over. I feel walked over. I feel forgotten. I feel taken for granted. I feel so bored about life. Oh, if you just knew my story. Oh, you don't know what I've been through. What I'm going through. I'm like Humpty Dumpty. It's hard to put me back together again. Can I go there this morning? I know one who can put you together again. I don't care what you're going through, how low you may feel. There's one who came all the way down from heaven to reach you right where you are. Can I go there this morning? His name is Jesus. He can give you joy. He can give you unspeakable joy. He's looking for a fellowship with you. He's looking for a relationship with you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you're the one that he came for. How many know that he can bless you? He can keep you. He can save you. He can raise you. He can encourage you. He can build you up. He can turn you around. He can feel you. He can love you. Oh, he can help you. If you believe that this morning, give God some praise this morning. Can I go there this morning? Oh, you may feel that I have, preacher, you don't understand. I have sinned big time. I can't tell you what I did. But I know mm, I messed up. I know I can't be saved. I got a word from you from heaven. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Christ can save anybody. Can I go there this morning? Paul messed up. You mean Paul messed up? Yeah. Paul messed up. The apostle Paul? Yeah, the apostle Paul. P-A-U-L. Yeah, P-A-U-L. He messed up big time. And he thought he was doing that which is right. Can I back it up this morning? 1 Corinthians 15 and 9. The Bible says, For I am, Dr. Taylor, the least of the apostles. For the pundits. For I am the least of the apostles. Says that I am not meet to be called an apostle. How come, Woody, says Woody, how come you feel that you weren't even worthy to be called an apostle? Ponsetta, because I persecuted the church of God. You did that, Paul? Yeah. I used to be a persecutor. I used to be on the wrong side of the tracks. Can I back it up? First Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. The Bible says, Who was 
is was present tense or past tense? Some of y'all not sure. I don't blame you for that. I ain't sure. I ain't going to say nothing either. <laughs> Preacher get to embarrass me. Amen. <laughs> Somebody know my tenses. <laughs> Was me is past. I used to be. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Used to be. How many of y'all got some used to be stuff? Tell 10 neighbors, don't tell it either, amen. I don't want to know it. <laughs> I ain't tell your mind either. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and and Stella Injurious. Ooh, I'm gonna need that in a minute. <laughs> when Stephen was stoned to death, Paul was the ringleader. They threw their cloaks down at his feet because he was there when Stephen, the first martyr, was crucified. He says, I was injurious to the church. Can I go there this morning? Uh, now, Pentagraph, give it to me again. <laughs> but I obtained mercy. Somebody shout, thank God for mercy. Dr. Taylor, you ought to shout mercy. <laughs> thank God for mercy. Because I did it ignorantly. I'm y'all can admit you've been ignorant before. I got one hand right there. Ignorantly in unbelief. Can I go there? And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Can I go there? This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Of whom I am the chief. How many of y'all know that Paul was the chief sinner? How many know there's some more chiefs out there? Can I go there this morning? If he saved Paul, can he save us too? Can I go there this morning? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 10 and 11. Paul said, but by the grace of God. Somebody said, thank God for the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Can I get a witness right there? And his grace to me was without effect. Can I go there? Was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believed. Am I right about it? Uh, as I get ready to come on in for close. I don't care what you have done this morning. The grace of God can save you. Somebody shout, thank God for his grace. The grace of God can deliver you. I don't care what kind of bondage you might have. It might be a drug bondage. It might be an alcohol bondage. It might be a sexual problem. I don't care what it is. God can deliver you. Somebody said, thank God for his grace. Can I back it up this body? Can I back it up this body? Somebody shout, thank God for his grace. Can I go there this morning? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8. The Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Am I right about it? And that's not 
of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Somebody say, thank God for his gift. Can I go a little bit further? The grace of God can empower you. The grace of God can give you the power to live a victorious Christian life. Somebody said, thank God for his grace. Can I go there this morning? Grace will give you power to live the Christian life. When Paul was being challenged on every side, when he sought the Lord three times for help, the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Can I go there this morning? Preacher, can I be saved? Yes, you can be saved. Can I back it up this morning? Today is the day you hear my voice. Harden not your heart. Can I go there this morning? Preacher, can I be delivered this morning? Yes, you can be delivered. Can I go there this morning? Preacher, can you tell me one more time just what is the gospel? Can I go there this morning? I need you to repeat after me. The gospel is just three facts, three simple facts. Can we go there this morning? I want you to repeat after me. Number one, Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose again. If you believe that, give God a hand of praise. Preacher, can I be saved today? Can I be saved this hour? Can I be saved this minute? Can I be saved right now? Yes, you can. Can I back it up? Romans chapter 10, Dr. Jackson, verse 13. Can I go there? For whosoever, whose name is whosoever, all your names is whosoever. How many know your name is in the Bible? That's your name right there. Take that with neighbor. You're looking at whosoever. For whosoever shall call Jonathan upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe that this morning, give God a shout of praise. Give me a shout of praise. Preacher, can I become a part of the family of God? Yes, you can. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Well, preacher, I want to be saved, but I want to know what to say. Can you tell me what to say? Does your Bible tell you what to say? Yes, it does. Can I go there this morning? Can I go there this morning? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Can I go there? Can I go there? That if, shout if. Somebody said shout if. If thou shalt confess. Help me, Holy Ghost. With thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Come on, Tim. Thou shalt. I need a witness right here. Doc, doc I need a witness. I need a witness. Y'all know you got one. I got one. I, I, got, I got at least one. At least one. Reverend Biggie, I got to finish this scripture. Somebody lost, they can be saved. You don't have to run and go get Reverend Markham. You don't have to run and get Dr. Jackson. Just grab the word. Grab the word. You run somebody down here and they, they might die before they get here. <laughs> Reverend, they died before they got here. Can I go there? This is the salvation of souls. 
I was going to say this for the laugh, but I'm going to bring it in here now. Can y'all see me? No, you can't. Can y'all see me? If you can see me, raise your hand. Some hands are still down. Try one more time. If you can see me, raise your hand. Still one hand down. One more time. If you see me, raise your hand. Now watch this. This is the gospel. Three simple facts. If you're lost and you hear this gospel and you get saved, I'm the best person you ever met on this earth. More than your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. Because you got the ticket to heaven saved. Anybody got a coin on them? Anybody got a coin, a nickel, a dime, anything on them? Everybody's running to the purse. The men haven't moved yet. <laughs> give me a coin. Come on, brother. Only brother brought me a coin. I give it back. Amen. They scared I wasn't going to give it back. Watch this. I'm going to flip this coin. The coin has the other side. If you don't receive Christ, if you don't receive Christ and you walk out of here, Spirit told me in my study, I will be the worst person you ever met on this earth because God will use me to convict you that you heard the gospel and you had a chance and you walked away. And then as you're on your way to hell, you will say, I was the worst person that you met on the earth because I knew what I was doing. This is your ticket to heaven or to hell. That is no plaything. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made. What is the gospel? Three facts is the gospel. The world is hungry for the gospel. And you have the gospel. Sister Moses, be getting ready, be getting ready, get ready. Three things, three facts. Three facts, three facts, three facts is the gospel. So that there be no blood on my hands. I want to land my plane because God told me, go make it so clear that they cannot err. 
Omega complex so clear. Now, Pentagraph and Murray and some of y'all been in the classroom, y'all, y'all know how when you really want to drill something through and you say, they're going to sit right there and I'm going to go over it and I'm going to over it until I know they got it. I know y'all got it this morning. I know y'all got it. Just three things the gospel is. And I want y'all to repeat after me and I will have done my job. Clear as can be. Ain't no blood on my hand. Three things. This is the gospel. And y'all repeat after me. Three things. And thank you, Dr. Jackson. You are so mellow with that music. Repeat after me as I say each one. Preacher, what is the gospel? Well, this is what it is. Number one, Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was buried. And Jesus rose again. According to scriptures, give God a hand of praise. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you. Do the invitation. Sister Moses is going to sing a song, songs, whatever she got. And then uh, I'm going to recognize visitors and then Dr. Jackson is going to close us out. And then I'm going to say happy Resurrection Sunday to all of you all. But stand on your feet right now. You all look so beautiful here this morning. So beautiful you all. To see a house full of y'all. It's good to see you all. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If there's someone here that wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you don't want to leave out of here lost, but you want this day to receive Jesus, I will pray the prayer with you right from right where you are. You can just stay in your seat, but I will pray the sinner's prayer with you and you can leave out here a saved person. And that's what this gospel all, is all about. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior and know that you're saved, raise your hand right now. Every head bow, every eye closed. Just raise your hand. Okay. I see that hand. 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 Amen. Appreciate it. I'm not going to ask you to come down. I'm just going to pray right where you are. Right where you are. And today, you leave out of here. And you're going to be able to say, that's the best person I've met on earth today. Because this is going to be your ticket home. Hallelujah. Every head bow. Every eye closed. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe the resurrection. Forgive me of all my sins. Give me the Holy Spirit in my life. <laughs> By faith, I believe you died and rose again. I believe in your gospel. By faith in you and your word, I am saved and born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. <laughs> Secondly, if there's anyone who wants to join church this morning, you want to join church, 
I won't have you come down anything. I'll just have you sit in your seat and we'll bring some over to you after service. You can fill it out. Just your name. That's how we need your name, your phone. Now we'll make it very simple. Anybody want to join church this morning? Just wave your hand like that so I can see you. Amen. Just wave vigorously if I can see you. Okay, I see that hand right there. Amen. Wave real good to me. Amen. All right. Anybody else? All right. So, okay, Robbie, do me a favor. That young lady right there, just get her name and phone number. Wave real good, young lady. Wave real good. Amen. All right. Give her a hand clap. Amen. All right. Okay. Anybody need prayer this morning? All right. Okay. Then after this, Sister Moses, she'll sing a song and then we'll go from there. Now watch, see, you, can you all see my hand right here? Now extend your hands to my hand. Let's touch our hands like this together, touch. Now why are we touching a green? Let me ask a question for you. Dear brother, are you from my high school? That is, I thought that was you. <laughs> Another free money in right here. I said, nah, I said, I know I'm from somewhere. Now nah, I've clicked. You're from my high school. Now I know who you are. The world's too small, isn't it? He's a pathfinder. Is that the Lord? Is the Lord doing the stelly? Is it marvelous? Why do I want to touch and agree? Because I know where two or more, says Chamber, Brother Chamber, gather together, touch and agree to Brother Dove said there I am in the midst of them how many of y'all believe he's here right now God has something he wants to do for you this morning only God can do it only God can do it Lord in the name of Jesus you see the hands we're touching and agreeing about so many circumstances some need healing some need comforting all need help we all need your help this morning god knows we all need a touch this morning ain't nobody here this morning not wanting a touch this morning stick stick your hand in this direction lord touch us this morning touch us this morning give me one more touch us this morning touch our families this morning touch our church this morning and Lord, all the prayers we prayed this week, hear our prayers, but touch us all in our bodies, our mind, and touch our situation, circumstance that we got to face on next week. Let it all work out smoothly, Lord. May we all be blessed. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. You may be seated. Sister Moses, come bless us in song and and then afterwards, I'll come say a word, and Dr. Jackson, you'll close us out. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Ooh, let him use you, let him use you. Way back on Calvary. Oh, yes, Lord. The blood, the blood that gives me strength, strength. from day, day to day, it will never, never. Ooh. 
Jackson and and we end now. Uh, I, I I saw I saw what I thought I saw. I want to recognize this, but but Xavier, is that you in his military uniform? Just stand up. Don't that make y'all proud? That Xavier. I didn't know who that was. Looking so regal, looking looking like Colin Powell. Amen. I tell him he's my Colin Powell. Amen. Praise God. We're so proud of him. Now, let me have all visitors to stand. All visitors to stand. Amen. All visitors. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remain standing, visitors. Amen. You are a beautiful sight on this Resurrection Sunday. Recognize the many places you could have gone. You chose E.T. family, and we're over enthused, happy elated about that amen if if those are some of your families or friends or you invited them y'all stand right now and get a little credit amen all right y'all got some family members here amen <laughs> friends and family amen now here's what we're gonna do we're gonna have now we ain't gonna go nowhere because this pandemic <laughs> so, <laughs> y'all gonna stay in them seats amen let's get up so what you're going to do, you're going to stand up, all members, and give them a big hand clap. All members of ET, stand up and give them a hand clap that you're glad to see them here on this morning. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all for coming. You made our day. You made our week. You made our life. Amen. Okay. Dr. Jackson, give us a song, and then I'm going I'm to land with a benediction. Amen. God is good. Benediction uh, song first. Huh? Yes, give me, a, give me, a, give me, a, give me. A, how about thank you, Lord? Oh, we'll, let's stand on our feet and be thankful as we end out. Thank you. Come on, stand on your feet. We're gonna.
kind of thank the Lord. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're thankful, throw them hands in the air. Thank you, Lord. Wave them hands around. Ask God to touch me while my hands in the air. Resurrection Sunday, just give me a blessing this morning. Touch me this morning. Fill me this morning. Give me a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I dare you to say thank you, Lord. Oh, I just, just want, want to, to thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lord. Dr. Jack, how about, how about you being so good? Come on, you've been so good. Well, you've been. You've been so. So. You've been so good, Lord. So thank good. You you've been so. Oh, so good. you've been, you've been so, so you've been so good. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Saved my soul. You saved. Well, you, you saved. You saved. If, if you're saved, just kind of touch, touch your chest right now. I'm saved. Oh, I'm saved. I'm saved. 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 Save my soul. Come on, you saved my soul. Well, you came down. Came down. From heaven. From heaven. Just to save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. I just want to thank. Now, 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 put a circle around you. You made me whole. You made me whole. Come on, you made me whole. You made me. Made me. You made me whole. I was broken, and you put me back together again. Yeah. I was wandering all lost in the world I didn't understand. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do, Lord. You've been with me. Oh. Walk with me. Talk with me. You are my light and my life. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Can I bless with y'all this morning? There's a blessing in the house for you. There's a blessing in the house for you. And even though God knows that we need it. There's a blessing in the house for you. There are angels watching over. Watching over you 
And even though you may not see them, God knows, He knows, He knows that we need them. There are angels watching over you. There is healing in the house for you. God's healing is in the house for you. And even though you may not feel it, God knows that you need it. There is healing in the house for you. And even though you may not see it, God knows that you need it. There's deliverance in the house for you. Forgiveness is in the house for you. Forgiveness is in the house for you. You and even though you may not see it, God knows that we need it. There's forgiveness in the house for you, Jesus is in the house for you. in the house just for you and even though you may not see him God knew he knew this Sunday morning that we need him so he led his only son God bless you all. God keep you all. God favor you all. God heal you all. God deliver you all. God meet all of your needs. According to his riches and glory. I touch and agree with you in the name of Jesus that you be blessed on this day, all day. That when you rise on tomorrow, you rise and go in the strength of the Lord. I touch and agree with you that 2022, that God will bless your life like he never blessed you before and will carry you through. <laughs> Lastly, before you leave here, I pray in agreement with you that the rest of your life will be the best of your life. In Jesus' name we do pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. Give God a hand of praise. God bless you all.